it starts off with to build strength, honor, and courage within ourselves and one another. You know, like it's it's something where it, it's instantly about the community. I, I haven't felt the need to change it. I do change the way that it's been taught, meaning we'll, we'll break it down. You only have to memorize it one line at a time. And so we'll spend a month on just that piece. And we'll talk about what it means to have strength, honor, and courage within yourself, but also how to help foster it in other people. What's going on, everybody? Let me try that again. What's going on, everybody? You are listening or watching to an episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and I may have broken our two guests already with that. That little that that just that little thing. But you wouldn't know that if you're only listening. You should be watching this on YouTube, where we put all of our episodes. Anyway, uh, you're listening to me. My name is Andrew Adams. I am uh, the producer of the show and, and often co-host. But today I'm the main host, which I'm excited about. Uh, we are not joined by Jeremy this week. We are joined by two others who I'll introduce in a moment. And if you're watching, you know who they are. Although, let's face it, even if you're listening to it, you, you probably read the description, so you probably know who they are. But I'm going to keep you in suspense while I tell you a little bit about Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio and what, what, what we do. Uh, our philosophy here and our mission statement here is to uh, connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists of the world. Uh, we definitely think that the world would be a better place if everyone in the world trained in traditional martial arts for six months. And so that's our goal. How do we help reach that goal? Part of it is this podcast. We release two podcast episodes a week. We are creeping up on episode 1000. Just wait till you hear what we have planned. Oh my gosh, it is going to be amazing. If it works out, we're still working on it. Um, this show, WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, is where you can go to find the episode, extra photos of guests and from our interview episodes and things like that. You can also go to WhistleKick.com to see everything we do, whether you want to purchase a book, whether you want to purchase a training program, maybe some sparring gear. You want to see about all the events we do. Uh, Marshall Summit is coming right up uh, in uh, – like, oh, actually, it might even be up this weekend, depending on when this releases. Oh, I have to look. Or maybe it was last weekend already. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, all the events we do, you can find all of that at whistlekick.com. Uh, and, of course, if you believe in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists and get everyone to train in the world, you can help us by helping sponsor the show by joining us at Patreon dot com slash whistle kick and for as little as like five bucks a month which is nothing you like you let's face it guys you go out there to starbucks every day and you buy five dollars worth of coffee how about buying us a coffee once a month that's what you should do <sighs> all right so without further ado we are joined today by mr craig wareham how are you craig i'm great man i'd love a cup of coffee <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice, right? You know, yeah. when people no, spend five bucks on a cup of coffee. They can't buy us a cup of coffee. Come on, buy the show a cup of coffee. That'd be, <laughs> and we'll all share and it. That's right, we'll all share it. Greg, you and I, and our third guest, Mister Nick Tabor, is here with us. How are you, Nick? I'm utterly fantastic. I think if we're all sharing it. Can we at least all go on straws. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's great to have you guys both here with us uh with me today uh but nick and nick and i we both share a haircut craig when are you jumping on that bandwagon buddy never i have a reputation if you look at most of the whistle kick core team that you know th there's a lot of baldness going on i have to represent a little bit with the longer hair you don't want to shine no no chance that's no the chance to shine? yeah the that's core. the forehead score man hell <laughs> so we are the back to my head for that too. <laughs> so we are here today to discuss an interesting topic that I don't have a ton of knowledge about, but Nick, you wrote an article about it in Marshall yes, Journal, which uh, for those that may not know, MarshallJournal.com is an online magazine, chock a block full of amazing articles written by martial artists just like yourself. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to be a writer for Marshall Journal, you can contact them uh, at marshalljournal.com and be an author yourself and write some articles. But I digress. Your article was 
uh, titled Why Does a Martial Arts School Need a Student Creed? That's and right. So I thought it would be cool to have you on to talk about student creeds because you're clearly passionate about it. That's right. Yep. And um, I will be completely open and honest. No martial arts school I have been associated with has had one. Um, so I'm excited to, to hear your thoughts and Craig and I might bounce some questions off of you. So why don't you, why don't we start Nick by just saying what made you decide to write an article like this? Well, um, the first thing that really came to my mind when I did it, uh, and, um, the chief and editor asked me, said, you know, do you have any ideas on what you wanted to do? And I said, yeah, I got a couple, and he said, well, just talk about what you're passionate about. And as you said, you know, that is something here. But when I looked at it, I came, I had a couple of martial arts schools growing up. And one of them had a student creed that was about, you know, it was the same as a lot of other ITF Taekwondo schools. Almost all the same, same thing. And you look at it and we go to tournaments and you go, oh, okay. And where I was, you know, lineage from is Giffords Academy of Martial Arts. His student creed was very simple, but it burrowed in and it really affected the personality and when I his personality. And when I was reading about it, I said, okay, having a certain way to be able to conduct ourselves and as a student, as a, you know, as we all are perpetual students of martial arts regardless of our rank or where we are in the school, we have to find something to hang our hat on, so to speak. And I said, okay, well, how did I create my student creed? And I walked backwards and I went, you know what? There's a lot of good creeds here. And ultimately when I thought of it, I'm, as I was in a, a, the last episode I did with Whistlekick, you know, I'm in the process of still growing my own. And I want this one to be like when my kids are in their 40s and say, you know, if, whether they come in and only have me for a month or whether they're with me for as long or however long I teach, I want that to I want it to affect them as a person. And I don't want to just, you know, OK, I taught them a few moves and they, 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 they can handle themselves on the street and they walk away. Mm-hmm. And I said, how do I do that? I do that on the mental side. And I work on that and I do that for ourselves and ourselves. So like, okay. And like, now, then I got all revved up and I sat at my computer and I spent an awful long time typing it out. And I looked at it. And I went, Whoa. Okay. I'm like, Hey, this is pretty good. Who wrote this? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it came to be. All right. Interesting. Yeah. And you know, whether or not your school, and I don't mean yours, Nick, I'm talking the, yep. the, the, to the audience, whether or not your school has a student creed or not, you probably have an idea what a creed is, right? It's a thoughts and philosophies on how, in the, you know, we're ta- how people should conduct themselves. Um, I know that you mentioned, Nick, in your article, uh, some common ones like West Point has its own creed. You yes. know, I, I mean, actually, a, a, I suspect most all military schools have their own creed and things like that. So, you know, as an audience, like we can, we can understand what that is in general, Craig, I'm interested. Do you have any, have have you, do you have one in your school or have you been in one that does? Yeah. Yeah. So we have one at my school and we've had one, it's the same one we've had since I was a kid. Right. So the school that I run and manage is the one that I grew up in. So um, it's the same one. And I have found the emphasis on it is important, right? It's if you're going to have it, you've got to have it and utilize it. Um, But that implementation can be hard to do, right? Like that's Mm. at the end of the day. um, If I, you know, if I'm being honest, I probably don't, don't recite it or, or drill it as much as I probably should, but we do have one and um, it's the same one. And, And I think that it's a good thing because it's a unifying struggle for us to memorize right? Um, Mm. You know, we moved away from it a little bit long time ago before I was really teaching, but you needed to memorize the student creed before you were allowed to wear the school patch. 
Mm-hmm. So you needed to recognize the creed and what we were doing and why we were doing it before you were allowed to represent the school. Um, obviously that, that becomes a struggle when kids have trouble memorizing things or things like that. You know, there's a certain amount of you need to discipline and study, but there's also amount of, you know, sometimes memory is hard. And now you've got people in your classes who aren't wearing patches who, who now you don't look all uniform. Now it doesn't look, it starts to look a little, mm. so that, right. that kind of went out went out the window but the idea of the creed i think is important i think my initial thought because i only heard about this topic about what five ten minutes ago so i was forming the thought and the first thing that popped in my head was if you're going to have one you need to make it authentically yours i am not i am not a fan of a having a creed that every other school has just for the sake of having one Mm, right so point so the one that the one that we have at my school um it talks about why we do what we do and and what we should not do and then it and it has a cadence to it when you present it and the Mm -hmm. the flip note of that would be that i don't know any other school that has the same one so my school karate international there's karate internationals all over the country right like but we're not all the same but um I don't know another school that has a co- uh, a creed similar to ours, even the ones we're friendly with and, and kind of close to that I would consider a sister school um, has a different creed than we do. So it's got to be authentic to the instructor, the environment and the culture you're facilitating, I think is otherwise it can be detrimental because you're saying one thing and doing another. Yeah. So. And, and that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So here's an interesting question then for you, Craig, if the creed that your school has is the same as when you were a kid, when you didn't run the school, now that you're running the school, did you alter it in any way to reflect how you were teaching? No, because I found the creed and memorizing the creed. It didn't take me very long. And it's not because I'm great at memorizing things. It's because it resonated so strongly with me. I never felt a need to change it. Um, Interesting. You know, uh, it starts off with to build strength, honor, and courage within ourselves and one another. You know, like it's it, it's something where it, it's instantly about the community. I, I haven't felt the need to change it. I do change the way that it's been taught, meaning we'll, we'll break it down. You only have to memorize it one line at a time. And so we'll spend a month on just that piece. And we'll talk about what it means to have strength, honor, and courage within yourself but also how to help foster it in other people, you know? And and I think that that's important because it gives kids a sense of pride. Well, not just kids, but obviously a majority of martial arts schools are majority kids, but it gives you a sense of pride in what you're doing. And I think you'll find that if you have one from the get go, it it does really help shape and mold your philosophies and beliefs a little bit. Um, if it is an authentic one, if it's not something you found online and you just go, ah, that hits all the hot words that I need to hit. Right. Like yeah. I, this is, this is what I genuinely believe in. Um, we always talk in teaching and education and, and in growing up, right. You're a product of your environment. So you do learn these lessons and these lessons help mold and shape you. And the creed did that for me. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of, I think it's easy to overlook because I overlook it, even though now as I'm talking it through, I'm realizing how much it matters to me. But, mm. um, you know, I think it's important to, to keep it in perspective. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And the other thing that I found interesting about what you said is that it's unifying in its, for lack of, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, that it's not an easy thing to learn. It's not like three words and you have it, right? It takes some time to, to get it and memorize it. And that's something that everyone in your school will struggle with. It's kind of like a form, you know, like, right. yes, yes, you're the teacher and you can teach the form, but there are other students that might be able to help others learn it. And just like they might with a form. Um, and so I, I dig that now. So Nick, I'm not, I'm not going to ask either of you to repeat your creeds unless you want to, you know, it's yours and it's, you know, unique to you and for you and your students. Um, but Nick is yours also one that is lengthy to a degree that makes it you know, like, you're not going to memorize it in, you know, a day or whatever. 
Yes, it is. It, there is a length to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually I can read mine. It's four. It's four lines. If you want to, but, I'm not, I'm, yeah. if you want to, it, it is yours for you and your students. If you don't wish mm-hmm. to share it, I'm not going to ask. No, I don't. I don't mind sharing it. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't mind sharing it. But it's the the point of it, and just to bounce off Craig here, is really to be the pillar. Like this is what you would do, and this you, you can filter all the lessons you're trying to teach through the creed and through this to be able to do that. So I based mine, and uh, I won't go unless the conversation allows it. I won't go into like how I got it. Um, but I spent a long time trying to build it up. But um, as I said, I built it off of the seven tenets of my art, Chas and Do, which is courtesy, self-control, indomitable spirit, perseverance, integrity, honesty, and humor. And I have this here. I will have courtesy to myself and others as I maintain control of myself in all situations. I will maintain high spirits in life, always looking through tough challenges. I will always do the right thing, even when no one is looking, while speaking truthfully, while acting as my true self. I will find joy and work on seeing the good in my life when I can. Hmm. And with that, like, to give you an example, like right now I have a couple of kids and I primarily over the last few years have had teenagers. And kids will come up to me, and I'm sure you both have this as well. They'll want to talk about a problem they necessarily couldn't talk about with their parents. And then you can utilize that, whether it's something like the classic school bully or, you know, trying to deal with the situation. And, you know, they're just beating themselves up. Like I had one last night with a student who was just, really super low energy and he was just dragging it in i said well where's the courtesy to yourself dude you know what what are you doing and you know you brought yourself here that you're you can't control that problem right now but you can control everything in the dojo right now he went oh yeah you're right you know and then it was a way for me to utilize that and bounce it off the pillar and refocus him you know something like, like Okay, and then you're right. He, they, both of them that were there last night haven't memorized it yet. Um, you know, I keep it up, and we were excited to talk about what that means. You know, why am I having you do like why? And even kind of, it's an ability to also reinforce some things like practicing a kata at home. Why would you want to do that? Well, you're not, you're not there. And this happened with one student once. Well, you're not there to see how I'm doing. I said, yeah, but you should still be doing it even if I'm not around. Mm. You know, like you're not going to tell your teacher you didn't do your homework because you weren't at school. Right? So it was like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Integrity. Right, 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 right. Okay. And then that like little bits kick in. And over time, like my goal is for them not to memorize it over time Hmm. but to have the bits that do and this is also for myself for them to go okay because in time like generally as a teacher you know and i've been a teacher for i can't even quantify how long it's been (laughs) but over time and you guys probably remember like there was a school teacher that probably did amazing and you probably remember that person's name or not but what they taught you is so ingrained inside you that you just live it anyway. And whether they go on and that's the, that's the whole point of the creed. Are they going to remember, like if you're in the military, are you necessarily going to remember West Point's duty on our country? Hopefully, but are you still, is that lifestyle and living up to that code while you're in training and while you're doing that going to affect you down the road for the rest of your life? Most likely. Yeah. yeah. Most likely. Sense. Yeah. Most likely. I mean, that's the biggest thing because if you haven't get bringing off what Craig was saying, an authentic student creed and being in schools where one wasn't, and then one was, I can honestly tell you what bled in in reality. And I I talk about it in the article a little bit. What bled in is from the one where 
since uh, Gifford sat down and said, "What the heck are we gonna do?" And you know, it's just it's just five words: courtesy, self control, indomitable spirit, perseverance, integrity. That that's it. And what does that mean? You know, and most people who I'm still in contact with over all these years wouldn't remember it like I did because I added to, mm-hmm. you know, but they have a, you know, they, they could definitely say like, yeah, little, you know, a little bit of Gifford's Academy is always inside us. Yeah. And I said, that's probably because of falling on the floor, scraping our knees too much. Something is, that dojo is probably inside us, literally. <laughs> but... <laughs> The reality is that that's the goal of a teacher because eventually we'll be forgotten. But it, it, it's not about remembering my name. It's about remembering what I taught you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the reality of it. That's why a creed has to be in every school in order for it to really, to really have that vehicle. Yeah. So in your, in your opinion, you, you feel every school should have a creed. I absolutely do. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Craig, do you feel that strongly as well? Only with the qualifying factor of you have to know exactly what it is your goal is. I uh, because I feel like there is a, uh, the idea of you have to have a creed, and you don't know what it is you want to say. You can't sit down and write the creed. You don't know what it is you're ready to impart. Um, and and some instructors they're uncomfortable with the idea of being more than you know the. I'm teaching you this form. I'm teaching you this technique. I'm teaching you. They're uncomfortable with the idea of the mental or the emotional side of what it is we do. And I think that if they are not prepared yet, whether they own a school or they run a class, then you have to be careful because you have to be able to uniquely identify what it is you want them to leave with. I agree with what Nick said. Most students are going to leave us not not necessarily needing the fighting skills, though they may have them. They, they, it's the other things that are important. And and I've said that, and I don't, this is probably like my 700th episode of, of martial arts radio or something. So I feel like I've said that a lot over the time, but I think that it's important, right? So our creed uh, is to build strength, honor, and courage within ourselves and one another to promote a strong and peaceful community through friendship, cooperation, and leadership never misuse our knowledge or fight to achieve selfish ends, but to develop might for right. That's the whole creed. And I, I think as I say it, it, you know, I, I feel as though most of that falls in line with who I am and what I embody anyway. And I think that to Nick's point, it was taught to me, right? Like that, that mindset and that shift was taught to me. I also think it's important to have this understanding is Nick's is creed to my ear sounds like a personal mission, right? I am going to do this. I am going to do that. And what struck me was my, uh, my creed for our school. It's I, or it's an hour or we, or it's Mm. so you can also as, and I'm just kind of giving this as a thought, a brainstorm for instructors who, if they don't know what they want the student individually to do, they can also talk about what the culture of their school and training at their school will do. And that's, mm-hmm. the, I don't think one way or the other is better. I think that it depends on your comfort level, your ability, and what you're looking for out of your creed. Totally agree with you, Craig. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I dig that. Uh, that's, that's an interesting way to think about it, that you certainly can have a creed that would be singular. That is about me or the mm-hmm. student. Um, and then one that is more general for the school, which obviously embodies the students as well. Um, but, you know, definitely two different ways of thinking of the same thing. Right. Um, so, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I've never been in a school that had one. Um, that doesn't mean we didn't practice and the instructors didn't teach the things like what you were talking about, perseverance, indomitable spirit, all of those things. It was just done in a different way. Um, I'm not going to say worse way or better way. It's just in a different way. Um, and it usually had to do with Matt Chat's um, or at testing, there would always be a, a quote unquote lecture part of the test. And he would talk about some of those, you know, instructors would talk about some of those things, but it's definitely different 
because what if students aren't there at that class? As opposed to a creed that every student has to learn, you don't have to worry about anyone being overlooked. Like everybody's going to get it because they have to. It's part of the curriculum. Um, now, Craig, you said something earlier on that I found really interesting, which uh, you have since gone back on, but it was in terms of you weren't allowed to wear the patch until you could recite the creed. So there was a little bit of a, a of a barrier to entry in order to get that patch. Mm -hmm. um, and you have, you know, you've since gone back on that, which I, I understand why, but is it still part of your curriculum? Are you allowed to like, is it required on any of your testing or things like that? It's no longer required on testing, but it is expected you learn. I'm I'm a big fan of in in curriculum, which is it's, it's whole separate episode, right? Um, I think that you can have an expectation of a student; and it doesn't need to be codified in a curriculum, like it was sure. when I was a kid. Sure. So for yep. for me, the the flip note was you needed the student creed to test, or you needed the student creed to get the patch. You weren't allowed to test for your orange belt without a school patch. So okay. you could so go from white so to yellow, but you couldn't go yeah. any higher until you had the patch. So, uh, so there was there was even more wow. of a barrier, and mm -hmm. and you know to to the point where back then, I mean, obviously I wasn't teaching, but there were there were a lot of students in the school. There were um, at the time close to three hundred students. I didn't see anyone without a patch after. I didn't see anyone get to yellow belt without the patch because it was something you like you just wanted that patch yeah you know and the instructors would help you with it the the senior students would help you with it i remember guiding kids through it when i was a kid right like i i remember that kind of camaraderie of let's help you get there um mm. because like i said before and i'm a big fan of this too that 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 universal struggle right that 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 yeah. idea that maybe somebody's a star athlete and doing all this physical stuff is easy for them well, but what happens to the kid who can look, read a book and memorize all the facts? Well, that soon creed part's probably easier to them. And so there's a universal struggle, but it's it tailors to the person. The athlete may have mm -hmm. a hard time with the creed, whereas the you know, the the person with great memory has a harder time with the forms. Like you get to kind of encompass all. Cause I think the struggle of memorizing it was part of doing it. Yeah. Now, Nick, what about you? Is it a requirement at all for your testing or, or anything of that nature? No, I I, um, I do like what Craig was saying, though. I, I think it's really interesting because having a barrier, uh, it almost seemed like it created the culture in a way, if, uh, if I'm not wrong, because when you have you have that star athlete and then you have that yellow belt that might be the you know the book smart person who got it and then is reaching back and helping that white belt out to be able to memorize it so they could get their patch it seems like it was a it was a tool to unify everything it, it, am i wrong on that no um i yeah. don't think so and and i don't know cuz i wasn't hmm. the one who made the decision that that was yeah. the the intended consequence it may have yeah. been a natural consequence but i think it was a good one right yeah and and, yeah. and so i i think that i i love that that idea of the the universal struggle somewhere some along the right. way it makes yeah. a barrier so yeah. but i don't know that that was the initial intention yeah and i agree with what you're saying with the universal struggle because when i created this creed it was at first it was for me mm -hmm. just for me to wake up in the morning and do this and say, okay, I'll, I'll memorize this as much as something like the, you know, um, the four agreements, you know, by Miguel Ruiz or reading something like that. I said, okay, what could I do for me? That would make me the best person. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I stress with my students that this is also not something we can, ma we can master either you know where the last line i will find joy in my life you know, i'll find joy and if you're going through a very tough situation you know where like i was a few years ago it's 
the wording itself is, you know, like, oh, I'm not, you know, somebody would say, oh, I'm not doing well because I'm not finding joy. I will find joy and keep my spirits high in life through tough challenges. But it's a constant work in progress. You know, if you just had a, a death in the family, for example, yeah, it's going to be super hard to find joy. But then we can come together and help you out with that. Hmm. You know, and we can, we can help you out and we can work with that and say, okay, because to me, it's like mastering the student creed in my mind would be like somebody earning a 10th degree black belt in Taekwondo. Where that, you know, that is just, that's not a, that's not a thing that's achievable because that's equivalency of Kelly Thomas would say that's an equivalency of perfection and mm. nobody's, you know, we still have consistency to learn. And, you know, as much as I tell my students, I can learn something from you eventually. And I want these kids to be better than I am at something, so to speak, you know, not put me on a pedestal because I have the title of sensei in the class. Got you know, it. I yep. want I want it to be something that even I'm working on, you know, where it's like we all have those days when you walk away and go, dang it, I was an idiot there or I could have I could have done way better. But then you go back and go, all right, I got to have some courtesy to myself. You know what? That's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I can do better when I come across that situation next time. Yeah. And now always be better. Now, Nick, you mentioned that yours, you know, was something you came up with kind of for yourself. Yep. Did you adapt it at all when you brought it into your school for everyone? No, because it's ultimately with the goal being that they wouldn't they wouldn't memorize it. They would ultimately live the life. I think when you have eventually i think the goal of anybody is if you have someone who sticks around long enough and they open up their own school or maybe they have kids and they do or whatever they do is that they extend it on to other people mm -hmm. and you know they're gonna do like this is the rubric and this is the pillar however you're gonna create your own eventually you know off of off of something with that like i took you know, i took this from giffords academy and I expanded it to my own. Sure. But you know, somebody else is going to be able to do that and say, okay, let's do something else. But this is for me. This is what I do. And then they could take it and go, you know what? I, I really need to work on my self-control because you have somebody. I have a kid who just came in uh, to me who he has a problem with being very disrespectful to teachers. And, you know, he's, just, he's not mouthing off. He's not doing that. He, he's only been in a few lessons right now. And he just, he needs to know where the line is. And, you know, I said, okay, you know, this is where it is. But ultimately what happened is he's trying to find out why am I doing this? You know, and we all have that where you go in school. Like, what's the point of doing these math problems? What's the point of doing this? And then, but you could take that and say, okay, what's the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. The right thing is to say, you know, what did I just try to find, you know, ask your teacher, why do you want to do like, you know, just, you know, because I said so might not be the answer. Hey, that's not working. What, what can I do? Or like to be, to be an overall better human mm. and really get just borrowing a line from Steven Watson, um, you know, to really find that lesson behind the sidekick, mm. you know, and really just go beyond that and say, okay, like, I could, you know, maybe, um, and you guys probably see this, like 90% of kids will probably never get into a fight, a physical fight, possibly, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe more or something, but are they going to be able to handle themselves when, let's say they have, you know, a bad boss or whether they have like, they almost get into a car accident. Okay. Like how can they shift or they blow out a tire and they don't lose it on the road, you know, next to something or when something, uh, when something um, mental comes about, you know, where they're like, I'm really super depressed today. Can I take those, can they take those elements that came from the creed mm -hmm. and then, you know, but you know, they came from the creed, but also came in lessons and talking about stuff. And you learn that when you're learning how to do rolls and flips and wrist locks and stuff. 
But then they went out, they went beyond that, like one step beyond and went, hmm, you know, that's how I built it from there. Cool. cool. Yeah. I dig it. So yeah. a lot of interesting things to think about. Um, yeah. Craig, any, anything you want to, you want to add, chime in here before we wrap up? Any no, thoughts? I feel like, I, no, I feel like we've given people a lot to think about. So I, I, I don't know that adding more onto the pile is going to be beneficial now, but maybe a conversation down the line again and then revisiting this would be good. Yeah. 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 I dig it. I, so uh, the audience may remember, Nick, we both did an episode a month or two back about opening up our own schools. I don't have a creed and it has got my brain thinking about what that w- might be. Um, people listening or watching, we'd love to hear yours if you'd like to share it with us. Um, you know, you can certainly, if you want to share it with, with me privately, uh, I'm at Andrew at whistlekick.com. I know Craig has Craig at whistlekick.com. Uh, send me uh, some emails. Um, if you want to complain about this episode, send those emails to Nick. Yep. Via carrier you, can reach, you can reach me at uh, Nick Tabor fitness at gmail.com or through my website, TaborFitness.com. Awesome. I'll uh, pick one though. so thanks for being here guys before we wrap up i I definitely want to you know remind the audience of of a few things um you know this whole uh, discussion came from an article that i read in marshall journal which you can check out at marshalljournal.com uh if you're interested in being an uh an uh a writer for Marshall Journal, please reach out to Mark Warner, the editor-in-chief. I know he would love to do that. Oh, Craig has his hand raised. I've, uh, I've, yes. I've do you, contributed. Do you have to go to the bathroom, Craig? Is that why you're raising your hand? Can I please, sir? Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. No, I've contributed to Marshall Journal. I've got some articles up there, too. Well, see, there you go. There's all, I mean, I, I'm willing to bet if you're listening and watching this show, <clears throat> excuse me, there are probably other people that have written articles that you'll be like, oh, hey, I know that person, so go go check it out. Um, also check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for this episode's show page. It's got all kinds of show notes. It's got transcripts of the episodes, uh, extra photos of, of interview guests and whatnot. Um, you can uh, listen. Each of these people have been on the show multiple times, so you can definitely check out their episodes. Um, whistlekick.com is where you can go to find everything else that Whistlekick does. Uh, and uh, this episode is being really, we, I can tell you right now that we, this episode is episode 965 and Marshall Summit is coming up in two weeks as of this, when, when this gets released. So I hope everyone listening and watching will uh, be at Marshall Summit. Although Come I suppose in. if you listen to this episode four weeks from its re- when it's released, you'd show up late. We could always come next year. Yeah. So come anyway. meet us that Friday night at the presenter meet and greet and tell us your student creeds. Anyone yeah. who does oh, that gets a great. bonus high five. Exactly. Oh, I, you know what? That's a great idea. If you made yeah. it all the way through this episode and you come to the meet and greet, I will personally give you a high five. If you tell me, if you come up to, you know what? <laughs> if you come up to me and just say student creed, I'll be like, I'll give you finger guns. And I'll give you a high five. I might uh, even give you a sticker. Ooh. Mm. Now I'll give a high it. five too. <laughs> I would say I give people a hug, but that might be different. <laughs> so you don't you don't have to tell me your student creed. You just have to say to me student creed. That's it. I love it. So hey right. guys, thanks so much for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Give definitely giving me uh, some stuff to think about. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do this in a fun order. It's going to be me, Nick, Craig. So until next time, train hard. Have fun. And have a great day. <laughs> Smile! Wait! <laughs> That's a great ending. That's great. <laughs>